حياري I have uh, good, relatively good experience in uh, civil society in Jordan and the region. Now what I do now is that I, I work uh, with Hamza Wasil, which is a, a local uh, initiative uh, which works uh, to bring to communities together and to uh, bring people together and to connect them more together and with their community. Um, um, I'm an urban activist. Um, I've been working in the field of social development and um, social innovation since the, about 17 years now. Um, uh, I started three years ago an organization called Hamza Wasal. Uh, Hamza Wasal works to connect people across socioeconomic borders and to connect people to place and revive um, um, human heritage and urban in urban communities in the Arab world. I am uh, Mu'in Khouri. I'm a Heidelberg graduate. Uh, I'm a communications guy. I worked, I started my career in advertising as a copywriter. And then I went into uh, opinion polling and then lately into, uh, into international media. For the first time, or one of the first meetings, regional meetings for this project, uh, we met in Cairo in December 2010. And while all the different participants from the different uh, countries could uh, feel the tension and they would understand that you know the things are not sustainable and uh, the the way things are running were not going to last for long the major change has to happen but of course we didn't know or we couldn't perceive how this change will happen and when will it happen and i think a month after when, when actually around that time a few days after things started uh, uh, happening in Tunisia and then you know it, uh, what happened in Tunisia and Egypt afterwards so I think uh, the Arab Spring gave meaning and gave the, a context to what we were thinking and what we were uh, working because um, the discussions we had in the first uh, period or in the, or in the first uh, meeting uh, of the project we were of course all talking without a context. I mean, we were talking about something that could happen in the future, but we had no way of, of really knowing when and where and how this is going to happen. I was, was very enthusiastic and, and excited and um, relieved that finally uh, the citizen in the Arab world was making his and her voice heard. It's something that I've been you know grappling with for a long time why we remain silent um, when there is so much injustice and when there is so much um, disparity um, and for me it was a sign that you know it's not that uh, people are not aware of this, it's not that people are not affected by it, it's just that for a period of time people felt um, you know, uncertain how to approach it, maybe afraid. I think overall it's, it's a call for dignity basically and respect as, uh, as dignity and respect is not only about who I am as a person, but about my life, about my economic life, about uh, my personal life and so on. There's always dignity somewhere, you know, it's, there is dignity at school, there's dignity in the choice and there is dignity in the public space and I think that was the main call. Uh, of course, it's we, we believe, we think it is economically driven, but I think it's a very human and basic need for people to, to at some point to say, enough is enough, I want back my dignity. And that was the call for dignity, I think the whole Arab Spring is it's, it's all about. Of course, like all uh, transformations, it's going to be uh, sometimes long, sometimes painful, sometimes messy.
but um, we have arrived at a point where things will hopefully only improve eventually. We, we do a lot of programs uh, to connect people across the world, but we, uh, at least in Jordan, had nothing that connected people within uh, society, within our own country, and within you know different regions in the Arab world. I found that from my own experience, the times that I would get together with people from the region were usually where there were um, foreign programs that brought us together. Uh, this is on the regional uh, level. On the local level, from my work, um, there's a couple of an anecdotes that happened with me that really you know, got me thinking about where we are in terms of our, our connections to each other. For example, I worked in a community, um, one of Amman's um, um, probably most impoverished communities for about five years. And this is a community that's right in the downtown of Amman. And when people would come to meetings, they'd arrive, you know, 45 minutes early. And I'd say, you know, why are you here so early? They said, we, th we thought this place was really far away. So this is a place, a community of about, you know, 100,000 people in the middle of the city, and nobody had even heard of it. So it really got me thinking about how, you know, how is it that we don't know, we don't know our own city, we don't know each other, and we, we build these stereotypes, we build these assumptions about each other based on lack of knowledge. project attempted to cover um, all the um, components, all the different components within every sector, let's say. So within economy, within economy of course, there's a lot of uh, focus on uh, economic problems, on poverty, on uh, the need to uh, reinvent the economic systems in a fair way that would uh, contribute better to uh, sharing of resources and to uh, help uh, poorer, poorer uh, communities and enable them. So uh, this is the same happened, for example, when discussing politics. There was a lot of focus on the need to open up and to break the monopoly of uh, politics and power um, within, within the existing systems and the need to uh, create more space for uh, uh, political activism, for contribution, for participation, so that uh, uh, there will be mutual uh, uh, responsibilities and, and, and uh, more participation on the decision-making process. Uh, from the exercise I did at, the, at, at uh, you know, from the workshops, uh, certain societies don't know the crisis they live in. They think they know. And it's one way of finding out what is the real crisis, what is the real concern, what is the real question. You know, you think it's unemployment, you know, is a crisis. Maybe it's not unemployment, maybe it's the culture, it's the work culture, it's, it's learning how to, to acquire skills and fit into society to become a productive member of society, you know. And there are lots of things like that. So, Something, you know, the pursuit of, you know, crisis management initiative, it's all about establishing what sort of crisis are we talking about and what priorities do we take. Do we, do in Jordan, do we handle in unemployment or do we handle culture or do we handle uh, abuse or do we handle uh, a rule of law? And it's very much what I learned is, is how you learn to establish the priorities of a society, the concerns and fears of a society, and you project it into the future. Say, hey, wait a minute, it's about raising the flag. And say, guys, this is what's gonna come. If you don't take off care of it now, it's gonna be a bigger problem. And I think that's... Like any road to success, there will be many, many bumps along the way, and it will look like things are getting a lot more complex before they start to look a lot smoother. Um, but I think that um, I still have tremendous hope that uh, once people have a feeling, once people have a sense of what it means to have even a little bit of freedom, it's very difficult to take people back. Um, and of course there's continued attempts to use fear as a tactic to, to get people to you know, withdraw or, or go back to something that that's more familiar. And that will work in some contexts, it won't in others. But I think you know, what steps have been taken are not something that you can 
um, delete or kind of uh, eliminate. It's something that will will um, continue to to grow and and grow in um, you know within within the individual as well as within the country. Because as an individual, you you know you're taking these steps towards expressing uh, things that you have never expressed before you're you you're standing up for yourself for the first time in in a, in a long time and and this requires you know courage and and people also get tired you know and people need to make a living and people need to carry on with, with building their lives and so there will be again as i said both on the individual the community and the nation level and the regional level ups and downs but i think that it's a road that is extremely important to persevere on